What's going on and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to tackle down a lab from TriHack Me. The lab is about attacking Kerberos. And Kerberos, in a nutshell or briefly, is an authentication mechanism for domain controllers. So if you have a Windows server and it has domain controller, uh, sorry, Active Directory domain services installed, and it has a domain controller, and you have workstations that are uh, joint in your domain, then you are using Kerberos to authenticate between you as a domain controller and the clients. So you can read the introduction about domain controller, uh, about Kerberos here. There are all kinds of uh, terms, methodologies, the, uh, the pre-authentication, the tickets. So I highly recommend you to read this before doing the lab, if you are planning to do the lab, of course. If you're not planning to do the lab, then you can skip this part. I'm going to explain everything as I go. So basically here, the first question we have, what does TGT stands for? It is Ticket Granting Ticket. And if you want to know what it is, basically here we can go up and we can find the definition of it. As you can see, it's the Ticket Granting Ticket, it's an authentication ticket used to request service tickets from t ticket granting server for specific resources from the domain. So it is your first uh, authentication. Um, you know, let me, let, let me, it's, it's the first authentication phase, right? To be granted access to the domain you have joined. So next we have the question, what does SPN stands for? SPN stands for service principal name, service Name. Uh, principal. So what does service principle mean? If you go up, we can see the definition. So it is kind of identifier linked to the service, right? You are uh, requesting access to, for example, HTTP is a service instance. HTTP has service principle name that's assigned to it. Whenever a user request an access. Let's go down. So what does PAC stand for? So PAC is um, this one. So it is Privileged Attribute Certificate. We can copy it from here. So it's kind of a certificate that holds your information once you are authenticated. It contains your uh, permissions, privileges, what you can do, to, uh, what you can access whatsoever. What two services make up the key distribution center? So if you go up, you can see here, the key distribution center, if you read about this, the key distribution center is a service for use issuing ticket, granting tickets, and service tickets. That consists of the authentication service and the ticket granting service. So the components is the authentication service and the ticket granting service. The service here grants you the TGT. The authentication service, make sure you have access to the required and the right uh, resources. That's the first one. And the second one is authentication service. Nope. Uh, maybe we need to type this in this formula, AS and ticket granting service. Again, no. Okay. Deploy the machine. We have already deployed the machine and let's get started. So we're gonna collapse this and skip to an emulation and So basically, of course, I'm not gonna read line by line. You can read, of course, as long as you know English. Okay, so here we're gonna use Kubernetes to authenticate, uh, sorry, to enumerate for the users on the domain controllers whose pre-authentication is not set or disabled. And we have already done this in the previous Active Directory videos. So we're gonna find the users on the domain controller by just enumerating the Kerberos. So we can do that. Let's switch to, or let's first add the machine to our host file. So the Trudeau Nano.
Okay. And then one eight one two four three. And we name this controller dot local. All right. So we're gonna use a tool called Cuprot to perform this action. So I'm gonna see the tools. And here cd to Kirkwood. We can use that, but I prefer to go back So we can issue here Kirkwood Uh, what's going on? This is Python script, right? File. So, no, this is executable file. So, here I'm going to type this. Here All right, so here first we define the switch user inium since we are emulating for users. Dash dash DC domain controller controller local dash T. It also we can put the IP address, uh, but in Troy Hack me they have used the, the same, so we can use the same controller and we define user list. So here. In try hack, we have to do download this remote uh, list board list. Let's see this board list here. Okay, let's take that. Not too much. I'm gonna copy the whole word list like that. And in a separate um sudo nano users All right, so here we define users.txt. Let's see here. So we see here 10 valid usernames. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, total 10 usernames. As you can see, 10 usernames. So we can answer the question here. How many total users do we enumerate? 10. What is the SQL service account name? Okay. Let's go down and see what is the SQL service account name. So here sql service okay next question sql service what is the second machine account name second machine account name account name it is machine 2 so here machine 2 what is the third user account name I mean, pretty self-explanatory. All right. So here we have enumerated so far the users on the active directory or the domain controller. We know now the users, the active users. So next, what comes next when we attack Kerberos? Brute force the tickets. So. To start this task, you will need to RTP or SSH into the machine your credentials are. 
Rupius is a powerful tool for attacking Kerberos. So we're not going to use um, uh, in packets this time. Rupius is an adaptation. I'm doing it for the first time, by the way. So that's why I'm reading. Rupius is an adaptation of the Kiko tool developed by Harm J0Y, the very well-known Active Directory Guru. Rubius has a wide variety of attacks and features that allow it to be a very versatile tool for attacking Kerberos. Just some of the main tools and attacks include overpass the hash. Overpass the hash means we can log in to another user just using th their hash. Ticket requests and renewals, ticket management, ticket extraction, harvesting, pass the ticket. Pass the ticket, the same concept as overpass the hash. AS rep roasting, extracting the ticket to grant the ticket of a user, and keep roasting the same. The tool has way too many attacks and features for me to cover all of them, so I will be covering only the ones I think are the most crucial. Let's download it first. Hmm, I don't have it. So basically, I'm going to download this. So the git clone. CDR. Okay, let's go back. Uh, and, okay, harvesting gathers tickets that are being transferred to the key distribution center and save them for using other attacks, such as pass the ticket attack. So we need to do that from within the uh, Active Directory. Okay. All right. So let's RDB now to the our desktop. And we need the username. Or well, let's first define dash u and then one eight one. And uh, sudo our desktop controller local. Why it's not name or service not known? Controller. Yes. So here, just modify this controller dot local. The password. I'm afraid that we need to type this manually. So p dollar sign Okay. Fine. Work for the first time. So this attack or this scenario assumes that we have already gained access to our targets and now we want to perform overpass the hash and overpass the ticket to assume or assume the identity of other users. All right, so we type CMD. Okay, as I said, this assumes that we have already gained access to target. Now, we will be gathering tickets, accounts tickets, right? So these tickets, we will be using them in an attack called pass the ticket, so we can impersonate other users. So we can use a, a tool like Rubius as instructed directory. So I have the tool, we have to go to downloads. So I have the tool ready here. Of course, we're gonna download this tool if you don't have it. And we first Ruby, yes, it's my first time with this tool. Okay. 
and then we type harvest slash interval say 30 and this will harvest tickets for the first 30 seconds it will gather all the ticket granting tickets for all users so after we harvest the tickets we can use them as i said in overpass uh, in pass the ticket attack so it's going to start listening now and find the tickets Now next here, as you can see, we have, we can also perform brute forcing, password brute force and password spraying with Rebus. So as already, it is a very great tool if you have a limited access, um, not administrator access to your target and you want to perform overpass the ticket, sorry, pass the ticket, so you run Rebus.exe harvest interval. Now here it is um, instructing that if you have given a password of some account, you can perform password spraying over all other other users so uh, to find out if one of these users have the same the same password and this is the example here we're going to perform now of course brute forcing you have a word list and you have a um, word list a list of users or a list of passwords we can perform brute force but the scenario down here it is performing password spraying so let's see the tickets what happened so as you can see here, we can see the ticket granted tickets for the accounts, many of them. If we inspect the output here, we can see the first one, controller one, and this is the TGT, encoded of course by 64. Controller one, here we have administrator, and this is the encoded ticket granted ticket. And this is of course, another ticket to grant a ticket for administrator okay next I'm gonna enter okay so here we're gonna make note of these uh, tickets as we will use them later now the next use of Rubius is to as I said if we have a word list and we have gained access to one password we want to try this password an attack called password spraying to see if other users have this password so we type rubius this is the correct spelling no root password and here we type the password that is to be tested so password one and no ticket Error resolving host name. Right, so you would, we need to, okay. Echo 10, 10, 181. We need to put um, the entry into the host file. Okay, uh, Windows uh, drivers All right, now we type again This is not correct. So what do we have here? Let's see. So we have um, user guest, and this is the account for Kyprus. Machine one has the password one. So if you remember, we go back to the previous results of the users. We have seen that machine one has, as you can see, password one. Okay, fine. Let's see the questions now. What, which domain admin do we get a ticket for when harvesting tickets? Which domain controller? Okay, the domain admin is administrator, I guess. 
the domain controller it was let's go back so controller one okay so right now we have used Rebus, as you can see, to dump the ticket to granted tickets, and we have used it in performing password spraying. The next objective here is to use um, Ink Packets and Rubius to perform curb roasting. And here is an intro about curb roasting. Curb roasting actually is dumping the, uh, as you can see, the tickets and the cr crack it offline. So here we dump the service ticket and find the password offline. Once we find the password offline, we can log in as the user. We can perform this with Impacket and Rubius. But the bottom line here, or the trick, is which user is curb-roastable and which user is not. We need to find who is among the users is curb-roastable and who is not. We can find with a curb uh, sorry, curb root. As uh, I remember in the last videos, we used curb root to find the curb-roastable users. Or here is suggesting we use Bloodhound, which we have done already in the previous videos. Okay, so here the first use is Rubius and the second use is Impacket. Let's try first with Rubius. So, And we type Kir Prost. As you can see here, we have the hash for ticket hash for the HTTP service account, and we have it for the SQL service account. Well, this didn't work for me with the service principal name, so I'm going to use the other tool. So sudo python3. All right, dash dc dash ip. The ip is 10. I don't want, why do I need to read this loud? <laughs> I guess you know how to read. And then I have controller local. And then I define the user file. The user file is users.txt. Shit me. Where is the user file? Oh, I have two. Okay. Unrecognized arguments. Yes, we forgot the dash. Dash users file. Dash dash. So here, I guess I have one service ticket for um, which account? Seems to be for the admin to account. And also we have for user three controller. But these results, uh, as you can see, these results were very different from the results we got with Rubius. So here I got the hashes for the service accounts 
but in the method we did here, it didn't give us for the SQL service and the HTTP. Okay, seems like we need to uh, copy the hashes from here. Okay, let's have them. And let's organize all of the hashes in one file. Let's, do we have a hash file here? No, sudo hash. So right now, we have how many passwords, how many tickets? We have one for the SQL service, and we have one for HTTP service. And we have two we found by Impacket tool for um, what was the tool, what was the username, user three, and we have for admin two. So now we're gonna use hash, Hashcat, or you can use um, John Dripper to crack the password. So the command is sudo Hash cat dash m for this number of characters dash a zero hash shiz. I will put here the password file. The password file is recommended to be rocku.txt. You put the command and you're gonna find the passwords for these tickets or for these service accounts by cracking the tickets. I'm not gonna do that. It takes so much time you are intelligent enough to do that on your own so basically we're gonna skip directly to the answer to answer the questions uh, let's see here so what is the HTTP service password it was summer and now it is asking what is the Password for SQL service account, it is my password. Okay, now we have to grab this character. Right, okay. So right now, so far, by using Rubius and using uh, Impackets, we have been able to find four t service tickets, right? for Kerberos to the users and crack their passwords. So right now we have two, two credentials for SQL service and for HTTP service, of course, for user three and admin two as well. And also we have the tickets for the administrator. So right now we can perform the rise 
lateral moves in the domain control. We can log in as SQL service. We can log in as HTTP service. We can log in as user three. We can log in as admin two. So the here we have what, what are they doing here? And uh, this will run here. They're using Rubius at, again to find command looking for vulnerable users and then dump found vulnerable user hashes. I guess it is the same. So basically, we have the HP printer, but why did, didn't this appear? Let's see here. We're very similar to Kube Roasting. AS Rip Roasting yes, dumps the KRB RSR5 hashes of user accounts that have Kube Roasting authentication disabled. Unlike Kube Roasting, these users do not have to be service accounts. The only requirement to be able to ace rep roast a user is the user must have pre authentication disabled, like we talked earlier. We will continue using Rebus, same as we have with Kubernetes Sync and Harvest Sync, since Rebus has a very simple and easy to understand command to ace rep roast. During pre authentication, very important to read that the user's, will, the user's hash will be used to encrypt the timestamp. And you continue. So basically, here we are using Rebus again to find the hashes, user hashes for the accounts that do not have pre authentication enabled. This is AS rib roasting. The, this attack is curb roasting. They are, they are different, but not too much different actually. Most of the time, you will, with curb roasting, you will find service account hashes or tickets, service tickets, and you can crack them offline. But with AS rib roasting, you will find here the user hashes, as you can see. And that is what HP printer. And of course, the same method, we use Hashcat to find the password. And here are the questions. I'm not going to do that. It's very simple. Uh, these are mitigations. What hash type does AS rib roasting use? Well, it is 5. AS uh, Kyrgios 5, I guess. Kyrgios 5. Um, AS rib E type 3, I guess. Okay, which user is vulnerable to AS rib roasting? Okay, so here, let's run this command to find out the users. Actually, we have to run this to find the user out. Okay, let's go back and run the tool again. Okay, so rule use as rib roast. So what are the users? First we have, look, we have admin two, and we have as well user three. Right, and these are the same results we got with uh, in packets. We go back here. Well, drag this offline. Okay. So I have user three and we have administrator. So this is the cross line or this is the common between uh, in packet gets NP users and Rubius is the AS rib roasting attack. Okay, so these are the users. So we're gonna go back and type in the answers. So which user is vulnerable to AS rib roasting? It's not saying which admin. We have two. One is user three, and one is admin two. Right, now how to find the password? Well, the password is very easy. We can use Hashcat the same way. It is very um, clear. The first password is password three. And the next one is kind of, I remember password four, or it was kind of, it, it, it reminds me of the first password we found here, it was given. So I'm gonna take this. 
I'm going to go down and here we type two because this is the admin tool. So right now with ASRIP roasting, as you can see, we go back. So here we used um, Impacket tool and also Rubius, right, to find the users that don't have the pre-authentication set and thus we were able to grab their user hashes. So these user hashes, we take them, crack them offline. If you have already access to the machine, you can do that from inside the machine with Rubius. If you don't have access to the remote target, we can do that with Impacket tool. Okay, now, sometimes what's the difference between doing that and cube roasting? Well, cube roasting, most of the time, as I said, it gives you the um, service account tickets, right? So here, if you go back, So as you can see, these are service accounts, and we got them by running cube roasting with Rubius. Now, if you don't have access to the target and you want to run cube, uh, cube roasting, you can do that with, um, let's go up, with get user service principal names. But you got to have a password of one user. So in our case, it was machine one, password one, which was given, we used that password to run um, curb roasting on the service accounts. But I don't know why I didn't get any results. No idea why. As you can see, no results here. But when I ran this from inside the target, I got the results. Anyway, anyway, it is less likely you will use um, the curb roasting when you don't have yet access to the machine. You want to enumerate for users which are likely to have some privilege. So you can do that with AS Rep Roasting, with Get NP Users. All right, next. Let's me drag the interface, the browser tab. All right. So enumeration of the users, uh, cube roasting, AS Rep Roasting, and here we did some uh, enumeration, of course, as well for the tickets. So this one for finding the users and passwords, this one for finding the tickets. Pass the ticket. So here we're going to get back to task three, take the ticket and pass it here with Mimikatz. Let's see here. So Mimikatz, I know, pass the ticket overview. Very important to read this. Pass the ticket works by dumping the ticket granting ticket from the LSS memory of the machine. The local security authority subsystem is a memory process that stores credentials on an active directory server. And kind of store Kubernetes ticket along with other credential types to act as the gatekeeper. All right. So with Mimikatz here, we can run this. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's log in. And now we perform pass the ticket with Mimikatz. Actually, with Mimikatz, we can perform pass. Uh, the ticket with the previously acquired ticket by Rubius, or we can perform, uh, we can dump the ticket with Mimikatz and perform past the tickets all together with Mimikatz. Okay, come on, prompt. So we already have it. No. Come on. Close the server manager. Oh yeah, not responding. Okay. See the downloads. Yes, here we are. Okay, so we have Mimikatz already. Let's run Mimikatz. Right, so let's check the privilege.
And okay, it means that we can run Mimic Ads. Now let's dump the tickets um, and try to perform pass the ticket attack. So click URLSA. And we type instead of login passwords, we type tickets. Export. Oh, yes. Okay. So right now we can take the ticket and log in. So let's look at the administrator ticket. Or I think they are in the local directory. They are. Oh, okay. Let's see here. Go to downloads. As you can see, we have here the tickets. So let's locate the administrator ticket, which is here. Yep, this is the one. This is the one. Rename it. And copy all of that. And we go back. And here we perform pass the ticket by performing or by typing curve heroes ETT and the ticket. And we type enter. So here the file is okay, which means Let's list the tickets, see if the tickets are successfully listed. Um, so what kind of output is that? Oh, I, I think I need to run this from outside the Mikat. Exit K list. So as you can see, the ticket is here, which means that we have successfully impersonated the ticket by listing our, as you can see, the cache tickets. Okay, so right now we have the same rights of the administrator, right? By just um, by just passing the ticket, we can do whatever the administrator can do. Of course, I know we are already administrators, and this doesn't make sense. But if by if by some if by some chance you have gained access to a remote host and the you were able to run Mimic Ads with your current user, we can just pass we can dump the administrator ticket and pass it with pass ticket attack here. Okay, let's see what else we can do. So this is pass the ticket attack with Mimic Ads. Now here is the golden silver ticket attacks. Let's look at this. So a silver ticket can sometimes be better used in engagements rather than a golden ticket because it is a little more discreet. If stealth and staying undetected matter, then a silver ticket is probably a better option than a golden ticket. However, the approach to creating one is the exact same. The key difference between the two tickets is that a silver ticket is limited to the service that is targeted, whereas a golden ticket has access to any care for service. That's the difference. Yeah, silver ticket is limited, but it's more still here than the golden ticket. Specific use scenario for silver ticket would be that you want to access domains, SQL server. However, your current compromise user doesn't have access to that server. You can find an accessible service account to get a foothold with by care posting that service. So yeah, we have a SQL server. In order to gain access to the SQL service, we need to gain access to the SQL service account, the service account by care posting or ASR posting. You can then dump the service hash, then impersonate their ticket in order to request a service ticket for the SQL service from the KDC, allowing you to access the domain SQL server. Does make sense. So here is um, the scenario where to dump the golden ticket and the silver ticket. So basically, the purpose of golden ticket is to dump the admin ticket. That's the purpose of dumping the golden ticket. We want to impersonate the admin. While service ticket is more beneficial if you want to impersonate the service accounts. That's why I'm explaining here, the golden ticket attack works by dumping the ticket to grant the ticket of any user of the domain this would prefer, preferably be a domain admin. However, 
For a golden ticket, you would dump the KRBTT, the Kerberos account ticket, and for a silver ticket, you would dump any service or domain admin ticket. Right, so here's the difference actually, the mechanism. To dump the golden ticket, right, you need to dump the KRB TGT ticket. To dump a server ticket for a service account, you need to dump any service or domain admin ticket. Doesn't matter, doesn't need to be the KRB TGT, it could be for any user. Preferably for the user you want to use or you want access to, uh, to the service, right? This will provide you with the service, domain accounts, SID or security identifier that is a unique identifier for each user account as well as the NCLM hash. Okay, so here it's dumping first the golden ticket, right? We need the KRB TTT account. And here we create the golden silver ticket. Here the golden one, the silver. Uh, Where is the server? Yeah, okay. So let's do that. So in Mimikatz, let's run Mimikatz. Okay. So first we check on the privilege. All right, now in order to dump the golden ticket or create a golden ticket, as we said first, we need the KRB TGT account. So do that, we run LSA dump LSA inject name KRB TGT. So here we dump the prerequisites for the golden ticket, which is the hash, of the KRB digit account and the service identifier. There are the prerequisites to create a golden ticket. Now, for the server ticket, the difference is in order to, instead, oh, sorry, of KRB, KRB TGT, uh, we put the account name or service, the account name or service account name. For example, SQL service. We're going to do that. So, first, let's create the golden ticket. So now we have all the prerequisites. We type curve virus golden slash user. The target user, most of the time, the golden ticket is created for the administrator. Right, domain controller local SID. The SID is the secure, the service, the security identifier starts from here. Okay, and slash KRB TGT. Here we put uh, the hash, the NTLM hash of this account. Don't ask me what is this account, okay? I have said many times earlier, what is KRB TGT? All right, we go down and put the NTLM hash. And the last thing is the ID. The ID of the administrator already been identified 500. Oh, okay. So the ticket has been generated successfully for the administrator. Now let's create a golden server ticket. The server ticket, um, the, the requirement for creating the server ticket is we go back like that, and instead of KRBTGT, we put, for example, admin2. Right? So we have the NTLM hash and we have the secret identifier. We go back. We type the same command here. Instead of golden, we type silver. Instead of user, we type whatever the user you want. This stays the same. This changes, this changes, and this changes. That's it. Okay. Now we have created golden ticket and a silver ticket. We can type now MS miscellaneous CMD to launch a CMD as the administrator. So, now, since we have impersonated the administrator and we created the golden ticket, we can access other computers by typing desktop or 
they are I hope it's gonna work because no one time it worked for me the north path wasn't found Well, I don't know why it's not uh, listing the directory of other computers, but the maybe it's the same error popped up for me the last time. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Okay, so now let's answer the questions. So he's asking, what is a SQL service NTLM hash? What is administrator NTLM hash? All right, so for the administrator, we can go up and find it. Um, This is the KRPGT. Let's go down. I saw something about administrator, right? Service key? No? Okay, how about we do this? Type here administrator. I will take the NTLM hash. wrong because uh, okay the copy paste was not right copy that again all right so this is correct now it's asking for the SQL service NTLM hash the same way instead we type SQL service oh no and here is the hash Right, okay. So this is Mimikatz and the story of golden and silver tickets. Remember the difference. Golden tickets, most of the time, you do it for the administrator. The silver ticket, you do it for impersonating a specific user account by impersonating their tickets. Okay. Kerberos backdoors. Interesting. Okay, here, this one, I haven't read about this. Along with, along with maintaining access using golden and silver tickets, Mimikatz has one other trick uh, sleeves when it comes to attacking Kerberos. Unlike the golden and silver ticket attacks, a Kerberos backdoor is much more subtle because it acts similar to a rootkit by implanting itself into the memory of the domain forest, allowing itself access to any of the machines with a master password. The Kerberos backdoor works by implanting a skeleton key that abuses the way that ASREC validates encrypted timestamps. A skeleton key only works using Kerberos RC4 encryption. The default hash for a Mimikatz skeleton key is this one, which makes the password Mimikatz. Okay, so I have to create a skeleton key in order to do the backdoor. Skeleton key works by abusing the AS rec encrypted timestamps, as I said above. Timestamp is encrypted with the user's NT hash. I know that. The domain controller then tries to decrypt this timestamp with the user's NT hash. Once a skeleton key is implanted, the domain controller tries to decrypt the timestamp using both the user NT hash and the skeleton key NT hash, allowing you access to the domain forest. Ah, so it is planted. Ah, this is very uh, dirty actually. Okay, let's do this. So, the same concept as golden and service tickets, the purpose of uh, creating a ah, backdoor is to maintain access, as you all know. So basically, it's from Mimikatz again. Mimi. Where is Mimikatz? Gone? Weird things happening on this machine. Okay, okay. I just am fed up with this directory. Again. 
cd back Again, no cats out of the blue. So it made kind of, it, it, it's flying away. I don't know where. Okay, so since weird things happen, I don't know how, how to actually bring it back. I'm not going to do this. All right. So here we create first the skeleton. And install the skeleton key with cats, And then as, as accessing the forest, the default credential will be Mimikatz, example. Well, actually, I need to do that practically because other than that, it will not be clear. All right, so Mimikaz has gone away. I don't know where. So basically, all I have to do is turn on Miss Selena Skeleton, and you are done. But basically, here, the default password is Mimikaz, which needs to be changed. So once you run this, the Skeleton key will be implanted in the memory, right? And now you can log in with any user, use any user to access anything on the domain forest. For example, this command here, as you can see, it is used to access the admin share, right? with the username administrator and the password Mimikatz. Here it is used to list the directory of the C, uh, C disk, okay, with the user machine one and the password Mimikatz. So you can use all kinds of users and the password is one, which is Mimikatz. And this is valid as long as the skeleton is running in the memory. Okay, so I hope this was very helpful. And as you can see, it was a very good uh, walkthrough, actually. I like this. Um, we have learned the enumeration. As you can see, task two, as a summary, in, learned how to enumerate the users on the domain controller by using Kubernetes. Task three here, we were able to list all of the tickets, right, of the users. So we can take the, the actually, these tickets are encoded, base 64. We can use them in step six. Keep roasting, reviews. We use keep roasting to list the ticket granted tickets or the hashes of the service accounts in packets or reviews. As keep roasting to find the users, not service accounts, that have the period authentication disabled. Also, reviews or in packet. Pass the ticket with Mimikatz, we can dump the ticket and impersonate the users. Golden, server ticket, one of them is used to impersonate the administrator, the other one is used to impersonate the service account. And lastly, maintaining access with Kerberos Pactor with the skeleton key. Actually, you can use, to maintain access, you can use task seven or task eight, the purpose. Okay, that was it, and see you in the next video.